Are you tired of struggling to create great results with digital backdrops? Let me show you how I approach it in a few easy steps. My name is Jade and uh, I have been a professional photographer for over 15 years. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys some tips and tricks and on how to get it done easily. So hit the subscribe button and uh, I will be posting more tutorials. Oh, and make sure to join my Facebook group with over 10,000 photographers for more tips, tricks and um, group only bonuses. All the digital backdrops featured in this tutorial can be found in my Etsy store. I will be posting the links in the description. So let's get started and elevate your photography game by utilizing these digital backdrops. Okay, so let's do uh, a couple of um, uh, full digital backdrop and uh, so we can put the model onto a, uh, like a full size digital backdrop. So these ones typically I find uh, that is, uh, uh, they're a little bit more challenging than the skinny backdrops. So if you haven't watched the skinny backdrop, um, that tutorial, maybe it is best to start from there. I will um, post the link in the um, uh, in the comment <clears throat> to link to the to the other one start from there so from that tutorial I covered quite a bit about like basic um, uh, tips and tricks and how do you just composite an image but this one we are going to go a little bit more advanced and so okay so I have these uh, Valentine's um, backdrop so uh, this one is from the um, Valentine's uh, digital backdrop set one is on um, so it's um, uh, on Etsy so it's um, on Etsy store what I do is I will drag um, let's drag an image uh, I think I wanted to do this one because she's wearing a red dress so let's put this one on okay so the first thing is that uh, you need to pay attention and not to make the model too big so you can see typically I will just uh, evaluate based on the size of the the door uh, and uh, based on the size of um, uh, the things around the model so obviously it's not going to go this tall to uh, to hit the chandelier so we are uh, but also we don't need to make a tiny tiny because you can see the door behind her is a bit uh, is quite far away so uh, but based on the door on the right side so you, we can see okay so we're gonna resize the model what I do I'm gonna drop the opacity of the layer so I can see what I'm doing and then I hit V so that way I activate that layer and then I can quickly just uh, 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 resize it so now let me see so uh, you and also you can see uh, I want her to stand on this little bit of floor mat just right here so this is still a bit too big all right I think that's pretty good okay let's do that the other thing is um don't forget don't forget you can always resize the image so the image I mean the backdrop the digital backdrop so the, they are quite big uh, and but uh, there's a plenty of room uh, to crop it uh, to to crop in so because I don't want the model I, I still want the model to be the center of attention so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna really crop it in like, uh, I'm just gonna crop it right here maybe even a bit more just right here and a bit more this way on the model to be in the middle All right, perfect. That's not what I do. And um, now what I do is I will uh, right click and um, uh, click on rasterize layer. So I don't want it to be smart object for this one. And again, remember the, the doors on the right side, the light come in from the right side. So make sure you match the lighting um, Match, match the lighting so now we need to rotate the image to have the model flip to the other side so go to uh, transform make sure the model layer is selected make sure you uh, 
uh, select down that layer and go to edit transform transform flip horizontal okay so now what I do is click on this the magic wand button so this one there's three uh, three options so it doesn't matter which one you're choosing so uh, once you uh, click on one of the options and then select click on the, uh, the button here select a mask so once we are here what I do is I will click on uh, select subject okay so you can see that's why I like to do it inside the um, uh, the interface instead of just the select the select subject outside because you can see in this case there's green colors around the model so it's not doing like as good of a job as I imagine so now I can really um, utilize the the options and then the the um, the tweaking on the right side so what I first thing I want to do is I want to just quickly have a look if color aware is going to make a difference okay so that's color that's object and that's color aware and I think object object aware is still better and then the next step of what you can do is use the second um, the little the second brush refine edge brush tool so click on that and then just go around her hair a bit to see if that's going to help. I think that's a little bit better. We'll have a look and let's go around the body to see if that's going to help on this. So that's a bit better too. Let's just go around a bit more. All right, so the next step, what I'm going to try now, because you can see it's still not perfect, so what I'm going to try is, I'm going to have a look at uh, the other options and to, uh, to see if it's going to help. Let's have a quick look what radius is doing. So I think I'm going to drag the radius a bit more to the right side. And then once I've done that, let's quickly have a look at the other options. That's smooth and that's not good. And feather, it's a bit slow, hold on. Okay, okay, no, uh, I don't want to do feather and let's have a look at uh, shift edge. So what we can do is that in this case, I'm going to drag the shift edge inwards. So I want to uh, get rid of um, the, I want the, the edges to come in, um, uh, come in instead of go out. So that way you can see um, it looks so much better. So that's that one. Let's have a look at contrast. Okay, uh, probably not so much on contrast. I think now it looks so much nicer. And then this little, um, so the, the plus sign is that you add a bit more um, to recognize a bit more uh, to be selected. And then the minus is just to remove uh, some of the selections. So this is like a little two buttons here. Okay, so now I think it's not too bad. I can work with that. So, okay. Now I'm just going to hit the mask. I still want to zoom in because you can see there's still like a, the skin, there's places I want to mask it out. So I'm going to select a, a white brush, 100% uh, soft white brush. Uh, maybe not so soft because I want to make sure I quickly mask the skin, skin out a bit, just like those.
Just want to see where's her head. Because um, the background is pretty dark, so I don't have to worry so much. Um, I'm going to show you another tip. So it's, let, let's say, okay, I still have some of the the green colorings, right? So I want to, I don't want to have to like erase all of them out. I just want to quickly fix it. So um, what you can do is you add an empty layer and change the blending mode to color. And then use the color picker, quickly pick a color around that area. And now uh, maybe just like 30, 40% of opacity and then let's just brush it in. All right, so at least so the color is going to match the background, like even the, those little areas, but these is just a bit too wide. Um, and then around the hair. Okay, so now it looks way more uh, natural, like even those areas, if you are being really picky, so you can just do that and you can just like quickly do that. So that way uh, it blends in a bit better. This area and here, even this. Sometimes I couldn't be bothered masking it out. I'm just gonna change the color. All right, and here as well, this little area, that's good. Now, what we do, let's have another look. Okay, the model is still a bit too big. I'm gonna group them together. And then hit V to transform. All right, that looks good. Okay, so now we um, pasted the model in. Next time, a uh, next step, what we need to do is just like we just want to match the lighting a bit better. So what I want to do is I want um, a little bit more shadow on the right side of the model. I want a little bit more shadow around the uh, the uh, the dress, uh, the the floor bit. So what we do is we can um, we can um, add um, a, a levels layer. So drag the mid tone to the right side, and then drop the the um, the highlight a little bit, and then you invert the mask. Command I or Control I, and use um, a soft brush, maybe twenty percent. Just brush it around the, the model first before we do anything else. So let me see if I drag this layer under the model layer and see if that's going to look better or worse. But you can see in this case that darkened the background, which is fine. But I, I do want to darken the dress a little bit. Otherwise, you have this cut out, cut out look. Uh, let's go back up. And then, once, um, so in this case, I 
decided, okay, I'm not going to drag it under the model layer because I want the dress to go slightly darker as well. And now I'm just going to continue to work on this mask and use a black, a black brush, 20%, to slightly uh, bring back, is a black, a black uh, slightly bring back the, the brightness. Okay, so that looks good. I think the model is still a little bit too big. Okay. Now what I can do is um, it's just some uh, final touches. Um, if anything else, I want to have a little bit of, I want to have another layer. So this one, I want to um, just create a little bit more shadows around the dress. So what I do, I will add a levels layer and then drag the slider to the right side. And drag this uh, levels layer under the model uh, layer. Invert and use a white brush, 20%. And then let's see, just want to add a little bit on around the dresses, uh, around the dress where you miss the floor. Let's have a look. just to make it look a bit more natural. Okay, now I have a little bit of shadowing. Okay, that's good. Okay, okay. So uh, the, the final touches, what I do is I want to brighten the model, the legs part just a tiny bit more, because remember the door is over here, and then there's a quite a bit of even light coming out um, from the right side, so I want to just quickly brighten up the legs just a little bit. I select the area and then bring the highlight up a tiny bit. So that's that. Okay, so next step. Sometimes I like to create an empty layer and then I use a, um, I choose a color that's that will blend in with the backdrop. So I'm going to choose a slightly brighter color, like a brighter red. So I'm choosing from this area, uh, choose a brighter red, maybe a tiny little bit more red. Ooh. And now what, what, what we do is I use a big white brush and just brush in tiny bit, like maybe that's, um, you know what, I'm going to just brush it in like this. So that way it gives it a, like a really soft feel. Uh, and also it blends in the model with backdrop a little bit more too. And But of course you can erase part of it out. So I'm going to, uh, so I added a mask and then I use a black brush, 20%. I'm just going to gradually um, Erase the model, model out a tiny bit. And then same thing as the chandelier. I'm just going to... All right. So that's that. And what I do... Uh, so this side, now I feel like it's a little bit too dark. What I do is um, I will add another level layer and then just um, brighten it up a bit. You invert the mask and then brush onto the right side to taste. <laughs> Just a little bit of that and do an over, uh, overall global adjustment. Increase the brightness just a little bit, just a little bit more. I really, because it's a, an, um, um, and red, uh, because this is a red image, I really want the color to pop. So what I'm going to do is I want to really pop those those um, 
flowers. All right, beautiful. Now let's have a look. Let's have a look at the before and after. Okay, so this is before and this is after. And we, if anything, I want a tiny bit more shadow on this area. Just behind the model, just right here. Maybe not so much on the carpet, but over here. Maybe a bit more over here. Okay, so this before and this is after. That's gorgeous. Um, and this is the after. So before and after, I love that. I just love this red. Okay, so that's that one. I'm gonna uh, show you guys another one. Let me get rid of this. Okay, so next one up, let's do this one. Let's drag, let me see, not this one. So where are the these ones. Okay, so let's just drag this one over here. So what I do is uh, I am going to quickly resize the image. I'm going to drop the opacity to see what I'm doing. Okay, so, so that's the floor. I want her to stand somewhere that makes sense. That's just pretty much right here. Maybe she can go even a bit bigger. Okay, perfect. Now, 100% opacity. What I do, I will get rid of a, uh, I'm gonna get out of the rust, um, I'm gonna do the raster, uh, rasterized layer. So getting out from the smart layer, a uh, smart object. So now what we do, we go to the magic wand, uh, the, the brush tool and then we click on select and mask it's quite important i find on these full size backdrops make sure you use select select a mask not select subject okay so select and mask now we go in click on select select subject and then just pray okay okay so it's no good you can see we are e gives us only half of the, the fabrics. I need the other half. Right, okay, so now what we do, click on this little plus uh, plus sign. So that's gonna uh, include more area that we really wanna select. So now I click on that. Oh, the other thing is because I don't know, I can't remember where are the fabrics and what you can do, you can drop the uh, transparency. Drop that so you can see what you're doing. Okay, now make the brush a bit bigger. So I want to see these, I want these. Okay, now it's selecting a bit too much. Selecting a bit too much. Now I'm gonna click on the minus sign. Just wanna, I just wanna see like how much. Oh, that's not good. Let me zoom in a bit. Okay, so minus, smaller brush. That's not too bad. Oh, that's too much. Okay, go backward, uh, one step back. All right, let's have a look at this. 
Okay, that's not too bad because the rest of it I can just mask mask it out. Okay, let's have a look. So that's not too bad. These areas and then the hair because the hair is the most troublesome. Okay, let's see if I can get more of the arm out. Okay, so now let's quickly have a look at color aware. Okay. Color aware seems a little bit more natural than object aware, but uh, like it's pretty minimum. Let's quickly click on refine hair to see what it gives me. That's good. Okay, I'm going to keep refine hair. Now let's, do I see, I don't feel like in this case I need all the tweaking on the right, from the right side, I'm just going to hit OK. But it, I'm going to quickly just do the rest from the mask, click on the mask, and, and a black brush. Actually, is it black brush or white brush? 100% too. So that's not too bad. This area, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna touch them yet. I'm gonna show you guys another thing. What I can do here. Okay, that's not too bad. Now let's zoom out. So, okay, so that's not too bad. What I can see now is you have this typical composite like a cut out look, so which we don't like. What I need to do is, um, the first of all, oops, <laughs> probably making you guys dizzy now. Okay, first of all, you can see, you can see here, I need more shadows. I need more shadows around the fabric, I need the shadows around the, the, the foot. So in this case, because remember I was, uh, the model was on a seamless paper and then now we are on the concrete floor so it's pretty seamless. What I'm thinking is I'm just gonna blend the both, uh, blend them in by using a big white brush. I'm gonna show you guys, I'm just gonna uh, so make it soft. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna do this, uh, maybe not so much. I'll Maybe just a, like this. Get rid of the sharp edge. So now you can see we have this blue backdrop, but all you need to do is that you use a hue saturation and just desaturate it. No, you know what? Like, no, this, uh, you know what? This is not black uh, concrete. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add um, a color layer. So empty layer, change blending mode to color and assemble from the close by um, area just to pick a color that's around the area and then use maybe 50% soft brush. Just go in and do this. So that way it blends in with the, the colors around it to make it look convincing while keeping all the shadows, the natural shadows, and then make sure the feet, um, add a mask, make sure they do a good job on the skin. All right, and so this area is more neutral so match the color tone here. That looks good. Oh, how easy is that? So now we have that sorted. I just want to add in tiny bit more texture. And then um, 
at the moment I don't want to touch it, so I am going to do it on the last step because at the moment I want to add it in because you can see now the exposure is not still not quite the same. I want to darken this area a little bit, darken this area a little bit too. So what I what I'm going to do now add a um, uh, levels layer, drag the mid tone and uh, drop the highlight, invert the mask, use a um, Invert a, let me see, uh, here, 20%. I'm just gonna make this area a little bit darker to match. Um, maybe 20% is a bit too much, let's do 10%. It's over here. And, and then I want to do some uh, global adjustment. Let's see here, just want this area to be a bit darker. And then I want to erase out the leg a tiny bit. Okay, so if anything, I want to make this area of the fabric a little bit lighter. Remember, it's, um, uh, the light comes from the left side, so I wanted this area to be a tiny bit brighter. So what I do, um, add a levels layer, then bump up the uh, the mid tone, and then the um, the shadow slider and drag it to the right, right side, a tiny bit. And you invert the mask, and then I'm just gonna brush onto the um, the fabric. White brush, just make it a bit brighter. Maybe not so much on this. I just erase the 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 backdrop a little bit. Okay, that's nice. And then I want the, this area overall to be a tiny bit darker. Okay. Now what I do, so it's pretty good. So I feel like it's pretty good. Uh, if you want to blend it a tiny bit better, what I again, what I would do is I put an empty layer and then just to bring some like a pink. It's like the uh, the just some light leak coming into the frame. Let's do that, and then add a mask and erase the model out, but not a hundred percent. The other thing I, what I would recommend is um, you can see the overall backdrop is this pinkish, like um, pinkish tone, but the model's model skin tone doesn't quite match that color. So what you can do is that you you can try to match her skin tone a little bit better to the backdrop, and then I'm gonna get rid of this. Um, so what you can do is you can go to hue saturation and then drag the hue slider a little bit to the left. So you can see now her skin tone, let me drag it, probably minus minus six is good and then I will drag the hue saturation to the right side. Go back the eyes a bit too much, maybe five okay so you can see it's not that hard so the first image i really did spend quite a bit of time uh, explaining all the details but once you get the hang of it it's going to be so much quicker as you can see this one we didn't even spend a lot of time and i think we are pretty much done uh let, let me look at the 
before. Let me open it in Photoshop. It's pretty, but it's like, it's just, it's pretty, but it's on <laughs> seamless paper. It's on seamless paper. Well, nothing wrong with seamless paper, but it's also really fun to have this. Okay, so this is before and uh, this is after. So before and after. All right, perfect. Okay, so I think I'm gonna pause here and I will do uh, a separate tutorial um, on a couple of other images instead of making this super super long. Uh, I, will, I, I was thinking of um, uh, doing on another more neutral backdrop. I can show you guys when you have a, like a more neutral model, a uh, neutral backdrop with a neutral color background is it's easier to blend. Um, and then I want to show you another one that um, uh, has this um, a huge uh, digital angel, uh, angel wings so I'm gonna uh, do a couple of images on those and yeah um, keep an eye for the next tutorial <laughs>